I'm in Brazil this week working with a client on their integrity risk management systems and I thought it would be a good opportunity to re-examine one of the biggest bribery and corruption scandals in Latin American history, the infamous Odebrecht scandal. It's been a few years now since this scandal initially broke, even though it continues to entangle business leaders, politicians, and associated companies in a swampy and fetid mess up until present day. Let's talk about what lessons we can learn from this scandal and what it means for organizations doing business internationally, particularly in Latin America. Hundreds of prominent Brazilians, including CEOs, members of Congress, and even a former president have been implicated in the Odebrecht scandal. In what was a landmark decision in 2016, Odebrecht admitted to paying $800 million in bribes in dozens of countries and was forced to pay a whopping fine of $3.5 billion with a B as part of a settlement deal brokered by authorities in Brazil, the US, and Switzerland. In the years since it initially broke, the scandal continues to ripple through Brazil, leaving many communities across this country and in Latin America devastated in its wake. So how did we get here? Back in 2012, police were investigating suspicious transactions at a gas station in Brazil. Criminals would bring in illegal cash, report it as a gas station earnings, and then funnel it out to someone else, making it difficult to trace. The police arrested the person at the center of that criminal activity and offered him a plea deal in exchange for his cooperation. When he testified, he revealed that he was not only laundering money for criminals, but also for top executives at Petrobras, Brazil's state-owned oil company, and the largest oil company in Latin America. The police then subsequently launched an investigation known as Operation Lava Jato or Operation Car Wash and soon discovered that Petrobras was at the center of an intricate and complex corruption screen. The company used its projects to enrich criminals, engineering companies, and government officials throughout Brazil. It worked something like this. When Petrobras needed suppliers to develop a project, it started a bidding process for the job. Uh, typically, engineering firms would compete for the contract, which should, in theory, drive down project cost. However, a group of these companies got together and formed an agreement. Instead of competing against each other, they colluded to fix prices and take turns accepting projects. Petrobras executives would then take bribes as incentives to keep giving contracts exclusively to the, the cartel and politicians took the bribes in exchange for their influence, and much of the unit money would end up being used in various re-election campaigns. The subsequent investigation into Odebrecht revealed that the company was engaged in systematic corruption, not only in Brazil, but also in many other Latin American countries, which ultimately resulted in a number of political leaders and business leaders all going to jail, including Odebrecht's former CEO. So what can we learn from this scandal today in the years since it broke? Firstly, there's been a noticeable increase in awareness of bribery and corruption in Latin American society since this scandal broke. Now, people always knew that corruption existed on the margins, but had no idea about the depth and the extent of the rot. The scandal is now the basis for a major Netflix series called The, the Mechanism and has served to help to raise awareness of negative impacts of corruption, not only within the business community, but also within society itself as a whole. When the scandal initially broke, some 17 projects worth millions of dollars were reportedly halted in seven countries due to the corruption charges. The end of those projects meant a lot of layoffs for thousands of workers. Indeed, one report uh, suggested I and mean, estimated that the corruption scandal wiped out 500,000 jobs in Brazil alone. So these have very real impacts, and, and this helped erase the image that sometimes is sometimes held that corruption is a victimless crime. And hopefully this will translate into support for greater anti-corruption efforts among businesses and government leaders. Another early takeaway is that anti-corruption and anti-bribery laws are being enforced like they've never been before. 
Argentina has issued a new decree which lays out harsh sanctions for companies engaging in corruption. Brazil is implementing a Clean Companies Act. Colombia is introducing legal protection for whistleblowers. Mexico has implemented a national anti-corruption system which bolsters liability for public officials, individuals, and companies. And Peru has introduced the concept of corporate administrative liability for companies involved in bribery. And there is some evidence that more resources are being committed to enforce those laws already on the books. Countries like Peru are also turning their attention to prevention efforts by mandating the use of anti-bribery management systems like ISO 37001 as part of their procurement processes. And Brazil has made ISO 37001 certification a mandatory element in some of its anti-corruption monitoring schemes as a way of putting wayward companies back on track towards best practice. So there's a lot of activity in this area and it will have an impact. Another takeaway from this scandal is that prosecutors in Latin America are more willing to cooperate and collaborate with their peers in other countries to investigate and prosecute transnational bribery schemes. And they're more willing to use plea deals to secure criminal convictions of those higher up the food chain, an option that wasn't always available in Latin American countries. There is also a lot more willingness among prosecutors to cooperate with each other. At the height of the scandal, Brazil sent over 200 cooperation requests to more than 40 different countries, which were critical to its efforts to end impunity involving corruption and to secure convictions against those who violate anti-bribery laws. Finally, we've also learned from this scandal and others like it in the region that corruption in Latin America is becoming much more sophisticated, using complex financial structures and offshore banking vehicles to receive payments and often involving third parties in shell companies to disguise the purpose of various payments. Sometimes it also involves hidden collusion with public officials in order to manipulate the public tendering process in order to favor a particular bidder or particular bidders. As a consequence of this, it has increased the sophistication around bribery and corruption. More prudence and greater attention is then required when assessing bribery risks. This means that organizations will need to go beyond a mere box ticking exercise when assessing their risks and adopt a more detailed and risk-based approach when, which, which takes into consideration multiple scenarios and risk options. So the outcome of Operation Car Wash and the Odebrecht scandal in Brazil continues to reverberate throughout Latin America. Much of this has been positive in terms of its renewed emphasis on combating corruption in Latin America. But it's also signaled that the problem of corruption continues to evolve and that anti-corruption law enforcement and experts in, in the fight against corruption, including companies, must remain vigilant about ongoing risks of corruption in the region and ensure that adequate controls and procedures are in place to guard against these ongoing risks.